Right, hi guys, so we've had a bit of a, a bit from Mr. Lee, so go check that out, right? But now we're going to do P1 again. I want energy transfer and efficiency, okay? And I'm going to go back a little bit, but the aim being to help you with the calculations, okay? First law, one of the first concepts you must get, right, is this what we call the conservation of energy, all right? Now, it's something you just always think about in life. People say, oh, or uh, I lost that energy. You can't. It's impossible because the concept goes like this: energy cannot be destroyed. You can't lose energy, right? It can only be transferred. I need to underline that from one form to another. All right. Now, when I say form of energy, I want to introduce into this concept. And you heard about this. You've been hearing about this for years. But there are nine types of energy. All right. We need to know them all. Now, I've been racking brains trying to think of a way to remember this. And this is all I've come up with. If you can do better, then, then please do. But I'm calling it this. I'm saying that hot legs and neck. All right, this is all I've got to try to remember these nine types. And now, when I write that down, I can remember them. So the concept goes hot. Oh, well, that's heat energy, also known as thermal. Okay, the L, what does that stand for? Light energy. The E, this is where I have to start racking brains, the E is for electrical energy. Okay, the G, this is the first one of our stored energies, is gravitational potential energy. Now let's deal with that one, that's when something is taken up to a height and therefore has gravity pulling on it and it's stored, it's a store of energy, so I want to try to explain that a little bit more. S is for sound energy, N is for nuclear energy, E is for, now I was thinking here, I've had, it, I've had electrical, it's elastic, the second one of our potential energies, I think I'll put elastic potential, Mr Lee might say I'm wrong there, but I call it elastic potential. I'll explain that again. That's when it, if something is stretched and it wants to return to its normal shape. Okay? C, chemical energy. And the final one, the K in the neck, is kinetic. Otherwise known as movement energy. So, hot legs and neck is a way of trying to run around nine energies. I've just come over. You might find a better way. Please do. All right? Now, the concept is, what they're saying is that a machine... Alright, machines can convert one type of energy into another. Now we're not just talking electrical machines, we're, just, we're talking any kind of machines. Alright, and you need to know how to calculate how efficient the machines are. Let me try to explain a little bit uh, If we have, I'm going to call this a radio. Alright, we put energy into the radio. What type of energy goes into the radio? Electrical. So I'm going to just separate that off so we don't get confused, but I put into that electrical energy, all right? And the machine, let's put the little dials there and the speakers, the machine turns that energy into a different form. That's what machines do. And so what comes out of the radio is sound. Now, that's all great. I don't know if you've ever like, touched your equipment or your electrical equipment, Often, it gets hot. And that's because not only does the electrical energy get converted into sound, it also can't help it, but it's not fully efficient. It doesn't turn every bit of electrical energy into sound energy. Some of it is the machine working and creates heat. Now, of these two, unless you're cold, I hope you realise which one is the useful energy, all right? Because radios are for listening to music. So the useful energy is the sound. And we can calculate efficiency using a simple equation. You take the useful energy, you divide it by the energy you put in, and you times it by 100. So if I can put some numbers onto this, let's imagine we had 100, and J for joules is the unit for energy. And of those 100 joules that we put in, 
80 of the joules were sound and 20 of the joules came out as heat. I need to transfer these numbers into my equation, okay? So I'm going to try and show with a pen what goes where. The useful energy is the thing that we want from the machine. So I'm going to put 80 there. I divide that by the energy I put in. I hope you see where I've got that from. I times it by 100 to create a percentage. My apologies. And that gives me an efficiency. Now I'm running out of board space here, but that will give you 80%. All right, and you can do that for all your machines. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. In the exam, it sometimes get more complex. For example, this could be a TV with electrical, and then the TV may give off sound, light, and heat. And it may ask you for the useful energy, in which case you will add the sound and the light together before you divide. I may come on to that again, but I want to show you something else. exam they love these representations these ways of representing the simple diagram I had before so you can rewind to go look at that but this is just a machine okay because I actually don't know what this machine is but let's call it uh, let's call it a person a man all right now what they're saying is that this side here of the Sankey diagram, which is what they're called, represents the energy you put in. Now, they will tell you on your exam paper how much energy that is, and they're saying it's 100 joules. You then have to create a scale for that, you have to work out what the scale is, okay? Because I'm going to tell you that this is on a graph paper, and there are, it's difficult for you to see, but I'm going to try to demonstrate to you, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I hope you realise that I'm doing this for simplicity, but there are ten squares on this Sankey diagram. Now if they're saying that a hundred joules is the width of ten squares, I hope you can then realise that that means one square must represent ten joules of energy. Then what they do is they will show all the energy that's coming out as an arrow. And it's the width of the arrow that tells you how much energy is coming out. For example, this says that kinetic energy is coming out because I'm walking around. There are three squares to that arrow. Because each square is 10 joules, that means there are 30 joules of kinetic energy. And in your exam, you will very often be given an unknown quantity down here, and just be asked what that quantity is. And all you've got to do is work out what each square represents by what comes in, and count how many squares on your Sankey diagram. From there, it then may ask you to calculate efficiency, that's about as hard as it will get. And you then have to put the numbers into our old equation. Alright? 